Anthony Phillips talks about an album that was almost not released. He left Genesis in 1970, but his first solo album didn't come out till 1977. We talk about that on Rocky Stream Music. As mentioned, yeah, it took seven years to get The Geese and the Ghost out in 1977. By the time it was released, Anthony Phillips said he had kind of given up on it. And it's a topic we have touched on this channel before, but it was nice to get Anthony Phillips on camera this time around. We talk about The Geese and the Ghost. The Geese and the Ghost and this this new album, uh, Strings of Light, it's interesting. I look at that first solo album and I look at this one and I'm not musical in the way that I could say, oh, look, at I can see he's mature or whatever. I, I don't I do not do that. To me, I feel things, right? Mm. Um, uh, uh, what, what would you tell that guy doing that first album? Is there anything, knowing what you know now, that you would tell him? Because that's a, that's a classic album. That's known as, That first album, so many fans love that album. Oh, I don't know. What would I tell him? I don't know, really. Um... Well, you must be proud of that project, though, because eh? that is such yes. amazing. Well, yes, I am. But the thing is, remember, it took a long time and it was traumatic and it and the lot didn't go right. So, um, I mean, I'm delighted that people like it so much, but I hear massive flaws and I hear massive things which could have been better. And I have mixed memories of it. The actual summer of recalling it on Tom Newman's Bard was great. We had such a good time. Um, we actually recorded it on a barge in a place called Little Venice in London. It was very cool. Very cool. Uh, the gear kept breaking down, but luckily it was a warm summer, so we just sunbathed on top. Uh, Tom was the guy that engineered Tubular Bells. Juice and engineered Tubular Bells. Great guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, we had good times, but the geese that go from it didn't come out. It just sat on the shelf for over a year. And it was a really, it was a really very demoralizing time because Genesis shot off into the uh, middle distance with Trick of the Tail. And Phil, who was never supposed to be the lead singer, he only, he only became that because they couldn't find anybody else that could do it. It happened by chance. Um, so, you know, Phil had sung on, on, on my album, on, well, what was supposed to be effectively Mike and my, my album, but it rather got it rather got shunted onto the sidelines. And I'll be honest with you now, I think I've probably given up a hope of it ever being released, is the truth of it, which seems extraordinary when, um, I mean, one of the most proud moments of my life was when Goldmine, a while back, your magazine Goldmine, did a, the 10, pro, they did a retrospective on prog and did the, 10 pro it was just a sort of thing they, they you know they didn't sort of choose um the best 10 or whatever they just they just took, took one by each artist or certain people 10 prog albums you should listen to so and there's the geese and the ghost sandwich between call of the crimson king and crime of the century and i remember thinking i don't believe this this album nearly never came out you know and brain cell of surgery was there towel with their I think he, they chose they chose um, an interesting Genesis one, one of the early ones, partly because it was of historical interest. But it's a magazine. I I remember the comment about the geese. The ghost was very telling. It said this album came out so late that not even prog fans like prog anymore, which was tongue in cheek, but it had its point because we were in the middle of a palace revolution here with punk, which which was much more unilateral than it was in the states, and. Um, you know, there was a sort of wholesale palace revolution where anyone doing that kind of music was suddenly a non-person, you know, and it was all a bit silly, really, really. I mean, there's nothing wrong with punk, but um, if you were that age and that inclined, it was not, not that different to the Stones and all the stuff 10 years before, but it was some of this ludicrousness that everyone had to be doing stuff like that. So albums like The Geese and the Ghost were not fashionable at all quite quickly, and... Um, my wish would have been to have developed that style. I mean, I would love to have taken that further. I'm not, you know, embarrassed about the next albums I did because I think, you know, they have the, they have the merits and they certainly have their fans. But it wasn't. I was going. I was made to go down a direction which wasn't, put it like this, the most natural. I would like to have taken the geese and the ghost one stage further mixing vocal tracks with more elaborate instrumental tracks and just experimenting with lovely moods and sound timbre but suddenly it was all pop songs again you've got to be doing songs yeah. you know cut this classical nonsense out have you good. ever thought of revisiting that of, of 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 or is your brain just wired differently now that you couldn't well geese the ghost yeah 
Um, it, was, it, was, it was put together by, by so many chances and accidents. I wouldn't know where to begin, honestly. When we came to have to redo it for surround sound, it was so complicated. Sorry. So complicated because we it was all on 16 tracks and some of it was transferred from two four tracks reduced to earlier So they were very famous and I mean it was crammed full, you know over an edit section You have a bass drum going into a flugel horn going into a you know bagpipes or something and So mixing it at the time. I don't know how we mixed it. It was a complete and utter nightmare It you still know. stands up so well. I, I'm amazed. Well, thank you so much. It, I think some of the music, of course, was written just after I left Genesis, or it was written with Mike actually during Genesis, in fact. A lot of it is from about, six, well, some of it is from 69. So actually, by the time it came out, some of that music was about seven or eight years old already. More from Anthony Phillips coming up next week. And remember, we have a whole feature on Strings of Light, his brand new two CD set with an extra DVD 5.1 surround sound on our sister channel, Rock History Book. He talks about most of the tracks. We play some clips off the album as well. There'll be a link in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. This is Rock History Music.